Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about ZBrush from Pixel Logic. Now this is probably the most popular sculpting application in commercial settings. Used really predominantly in film and game development, often used to create the high resolution meshes that people start with. Uh, it is a freeform sculpting tool, it's got a ton of new features and functionality built into it since uh, you know its beginning days, and actually that's starting to show in the UI, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the reason why I'm talking about it today is twofold. Um, ZBrush 2020 was recently released, and along with that ZBrush 2020.1 demo was just released. Now the demo was actually fully functioning. You can actually grab it and uh, gives you 100% of access to what you've got in ZBrush for 30 days. Now keep in mind uh, that does not include commercial use, so you can only use it to check out ZBrush, uh, but it is an opportunity to get your hands on the complete program. So if you got a bit of time to kill right now, which I think many of us do, uh, this does give you an opportunity to learn something new. So if you want to jump in with the tool and get learning it, uh, ZBrush 2020.1 free download is available. We'll get to that details in just a few moments. So here we are in ZBrush. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail simply because I honestly don't know the program that well. I first used ZBrush like 10 or 15 years ago. And I got to say, back then, it was the picture of UI minimalism design. It was beautiful. You kind of went in and you just started sculpting. It had a great user interface. Now this user interface is, I hate to say it, it's terrible. I don't know what happened. But um, in trying to pick this guy up, it's been just a nightmare. We've got things like menus that are organized in alphabetical order, not in terms of use, but in alphabetical order. We have this predominant button right here, right on the home screen for showing and hiding the home page. Who even wants to see this ever again? You know, you normally hide that in uh, about uh, or help about show home screen. And that would be at the very far right of the menu because it's the least important option. Okay, so I'm getting into a bit of a rant, but I do have to say, and coming back to ZBrush after all these years, I, I'm amazed at how cluttered this user interface is. But enough of the ranting. Let's go in and take a look what ZBrush is all about. And ultimately, here I'm going to go pick a one of the uh, stock um, base meshes to work from. And the cool thing is here, you've got things like um, multi-resolution mesh support. So if you want to create a low and high resolution version of it, you can. Uh, you've got tools for transferring detail between two models. You've got all kinds of stuff in here. You even have animal base meshes now. Um, plus you've got Boolean support, so you can start with simple spheres and so on and turn them into more compound objects that you then in turn sculpt. But here we are, sculpting is the name of the game. So we're in our mesh. Uh, we've got default, we've seen, we've got mirrored on, and now I can just start kind of modeling. So let's give this guy some really chunky cheeks, move this down here, and the brushes are pretty much the best you're going to find. The input is amazingly good. Uh, you get the feedback that you would expect. It's it actually very smooth to model in this guy. So that part of ZBrush has never changed. It's very much an organic feel. And so, so far we've been using a standard modeling brush here, I just keep adding detail in. Now, again, this is like working with virtual clay. So I can come up here and I can actually add clay. So we can start building up clay. So for example, we just add some detail to our mesh. We're adding some virtual clay to work with like that. So we got, you know, we got a set of, I don't know, let's say we want to add horns to this guy. We got some clay in here, just build it up like so. And then come back in here, for example, let's go over to the S brushes and we're going to pick out the smooth one. So straight up smooth, you say shift, shift key to use it. So now we can go in here and we can shift in and we can smooth. And then I can let go of the shift. We can add some more clay back in and we can smooth that out. Add some clay, smooth it out, smooth that ridge out there. We add some clay in, you know, smooth it out and so on. And that's kind of it in a way. Like there's a ton more functionality in here, of course, but that is the general idea of sculpting apps. Um, and the, the brush, the feedback, the working, the, the all of that stuff, the performance is bang on. The only thing that I'm kind of ranting about right now uh, is this this user interface this is this is just a mess uh I, I don't know any other way to work with or to say it or um yeah so so even here like so let's go up here and i've got multiple rushes i need to scroll you think okay the wheel oh nope that doesn't work okay well maybe it's this guy nope that switches between tabs but it doesn't switch in tabs in any particular order it just it just randomly jumps between project and document i think it might be some kind of a back thing so maybe if i go to material and then, okay so then we go back to document to alpha uh, so uh, i don't know i i actually just i was astonished by how like I, I shouldn't be struggling with figuring out how how to scroll a select oh there we go so what you do is you hold down the left mouse button and then you pan over but you can apparently pan over to the point where there's nothing there so scroll wheel doesn't do it uh, anyways, so it's kind of stuff like that. I just have found that this user interface is 
terabad. Now the nice thing is this guy does slot into your pipeline of choice. You'll notice here, um, you know, most of the major formats you were looking for, so FBX and uh, Maya's formats, various different formats they support, are all here. So this guy is slotted, is designed to slot into your working pipeline. So if you're a Maya user, or a Max user, or even a Blender user, you should be able to use ZBrush pretty easily in that setup. So that's kind of a quick and painful look at ZBrush itself. If you want to learn more about it, uh, a very, it's available over at Pixelogic. I will link all of the stuff we were looking at today. We can get an idea of some of the features in functionality in ZBrush. And the thing about ZBrush to remember is you can create some staggeringly good work. This guy, again, is used in AAA games. It is used in um, film production. Uh, now we've got new things like Zizus, so I don't have to explain later on what a Zizu is. It's basically animal-based meshes to start from. So if you're working on animals or dinosaurs or whatever, uh, we have now Zizus uh, that give you the ability to start from there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. Now, what I was talking about earlier on, there is a 2020.1 trial available. Uh, this gives you the ability to use full functioning ZBrush for 30 days, even if you've already done a trial. So um, the key thing again is evaluation only. Uh, it's not for commercial use, but if you've ever wanted to check out ZBrush, now is a great time. We've all got a little bit of time on our hands and uh, yeah, you've got full access to it for a month if you're interested. You do have to give them credentials. That you have, The email you give them is either used to log in or to send you a key. So you do have to use a proper email uh, with them as well. Uh, but I'll give you, I'll link all this stuff down below. So if you want to um, do the sign up, the sign up link is available here. I will do a direct link in my linked article to that as well. Uh, and then you can see here's some of the new stuff that is in 2020. Any of these blue ones are available over the video. I'm not going to go into that level of detail at all. But we've got things like extractor brush, extractor brush, which is cool. You can convert detail uh, from your model into a new alpha or texture for reuse elsewhere. Um, History recall brush, basically an undo in brush form, uh, and you can do it across uh, to another model regardless of the topology differences. Uh, sculpt and paint in morph UV, uh, move infinite depth, texture adjust color, poly paint adjust color, wall thickness analysis, and we get a lot of this stuff that's in this particular release, including real-time draft analysis from wall thickness analysis. That's more for the world of 3D printing where you need to have a solid, um, you know, viable mesh that would work in the real world. Uh, same with calculate surface area. Uh, those are all, you know, for 3D printing type worlds. Uh, Real-time silhouette view, as I mentioned earlier on, Zizu. Uh, so we now have a library of animal figures to start uh, sculpting from. Deco curve brush used to work only in 2.5D, now works in 3D. Model paint fade opacity, no back and forth mode, and new import and export options windows, making it easier. Uh, control when importing or exporting and support for even more formats all in one place. So that's the one of the things that really shines about ZBrush is from day one, it was designed to be part of your workflow. So unlike, you know, some ways like a Max or a Maya are designed to be your workflow, um, ZBrush is supposed to be just a component. It's for sculpting and mostly sculpting alone. So it does play well with others. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, what does this cost after the 30 days? And hey, everyone loves subscriptions, but don't worry, there's actually a, a uh, purchase once price as well. You can get it for 40 bucks a month or $180 if bought on a six month term. But if you're the type of person who actually likes to own their software, uh, thankfully, and, and I got to applaud Pixelogic for being one of the few that still is offering perpetual licenses, but it's not cheap. Uh, it's a uh, $895 uh, one-time fee lifetime license with an asterisk. I would be sure to check what that asterisk means. Uh, there's also uh, student options out there. Prices obviously do vary, but if you are a student, do be sure to check out the uh, academic licensing details. You can probably get it for a fair bit cheaper um, it looks like right here it's 50% off the current commercial price at time. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's up. You can upgrade to it for 50% of the cost. So uh, do be sure to check out their uh, student licensing. I think it's going to depend on your actual uh, student uh, environment, the retailers at your school and so on. But there are student pricings available for ZBrush, and they do give you a cheap way to get started with ZBrush when you are done. So yeah, that is it. That is uh, ZBrush 2020.1. Here it is once again. And again, I, I, I didn't even show one-tenth of one-tenth of the functionality to it. Uh, I mostly just showed the most important thing, which is, of course, the sculpting. But we do have things like materials and um, 
you know, there's a whole bunch of alpha stuff. We can bring texturing in. I'm not dealing with any of the texturing at all so far. You got environment maps. There's even a renderer built in here, as you can see from R in the, the alphabetically order. All right, I'm gonna start ranting again, so I'm gonna leave now. And even look at this, there's a, a fade. There's a fade out effect when you close ZBrush. And it's actually, it's funny because it, for some reason, it, it, when it's loading and closing, it actually interferes with other programs. So even though that looks pretty, it, it's kind of dumb. All right, so that's it. That is ZBrush 2020. Again, I'm a little sad. I, I loved ZBrush when I first used it years and years ago, and it had such a clean and streamlined interface, and it looks like they just added feature on top with no thought towards how to organize them into the UI. And if you are a regular ZBrush user, is that actually accurate, or am I just, I haven't given it the time I need to really let the, the user interface work for me? Uh, I'd be interested in hearing your comments down below. And yeah, so that's it. ZBrush 2020. Again, the ultimate sculpting program for most people, uh, and if you've wanted an opportunity to check it out, fully functioning 30 days, you got the time, maybe check it out. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.